What's up, my name is Larry Morrow, and I believe taking risks is probably one of the best things I've ever done. It taught me how to uh, stand in the ring of fire and you know, bet all on myself because at one point, I invested in other people and other things. And when, and when I started to invest in myself, that's when everything started to manifest. So I encourage everybody to invest in yourself, invest in your dreams, and all bets on you. Hey guys, welcome back to Couch Conversations with Shatara. I am super excited, okay? We have Mr. Larry Morrow himself <laughs> in the house, okay? I don't know if you guys know who Larry is, but you better Google him, baby, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna tell you a little bit, okay? So Larry has a restaurant, he has a book, call all bets on me and when i tell you this is really a treat you guys really need to go and cop this book um especially if you're an entrepreneur um this is really good for you um he has larry morrow properties he has larry morrow events mm -hmm. i mean what is going on with you <laughs> i'm just i'm trying i'm trying you're trying that's what I'm you trying. call trying trying to make something happen well i don't know what i'm doing if all of that is called trying i gotta start trying then <laughs> So listen, we're gonna jump straight into it, Larry, because I have a whole bunch of questions for you. The people wanna know, okay? Okay. So the first thing I wanna know is who is Larry? Who is Larry Morrow? Uh Larry Morrow is a man of God first. Uh definitely a family man. I definitely put my family, uh God first, family second, and uh, just a, a young man trying to get it, you know, a guy who uh very risky. You know, I take big risks. Uh, that's what my book is called, All Bets On Me. And uh, just through my journey, I realized that I gotta invest more into myself and uh, better on myself. And that's what I've been doing. So that's what kind of uh, got me to this point, realizing that I had to invest in me, you know. And that makes a whole lot of sense why you where you are, because people aren't risky at all. Like they'll risk their money in a casino or gamble, something like that. But as far as risking themselves and taking that step out to do certain things, they're not about doing that. Um, and that's what you and I connect well on that place about being risky. I'm a very risky person, but the people around me are just like, wait, no, pump me brakes, don't do that. You know, logically, right. no. But for me, it's like, no, I know what I'm capable of. And like, you are the epitome of being a risk taker at such a young age, oh my God. Everyone gets to see the distinguished side of you, the polished Larry, you know, but they don't know what it took to get there. So how about you enlighten us a little bit on what it took to get to where you are now? I think it took consistency. Uh, I started off at an early age, uh, just that entrepreneurial journey. And when I was, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I did, um, I had a clothing line called Chum Change. So that kind of was my start. But I always, like, I sold candy in school. I was trying to sell life insurance to my uh, my high school classmates. It, it's just, I was doing so much. And I was just thinking of different ways to make money. And uh, at 20, I decided to drop out of college, quit both of my jobs. I was lifeguarding the day, the valley at night. And it really just to kind of uh, help my family out, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, you know, I started to gamble. I, I gambled my whole life, but I started to gamble a lot, gamble in the casino. And uh, one night I lost all, pretty much everything I had. I lost 35,000, I was 22 years old. And from Sheesh. that moment forward, I realized I had to invest in myself. So, you know, just that journey taught me, just that entrepreneur's journey and investing in myself and uh, just, you know, just trying different things, trying to make bread and help my family. And that helped me put, that helped put me in a position to, you know, just, just figure it out, you know? I, I think failure, like I failed a few times and Driving out of college, I got friends graduating. I, I didn't want to be the one left behind. Mm -hmm. So it really motivated me to really, you know, get my things together and just go hard. And after I lost all that money in the casino, man, I'm like, you know what? I gotta really start investing in me. When I started to invest in me, that's when things started to manifest, you know, and, and, and really put my faith in God because, you know, I was going through a lot. Like 22, 23, or 23 was like the best worst year of my life because, you know, I lost so much, but I learned so much more. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was God, you know, uh, trying to humble me. Humble you. Because I was a young dude making money. Imagine being, you know, 20 years old, 21, uh, and you making money, you start doing events, and some nights I might make two, three thousand, five thousand, seven thousand, ten thousand, whatever it may be. And, you know, you make that money fast, and, you know, sometimes you can lose sight of what's important. And um, I think when God humbled me, that's when I, uh, I woke up, and I, I was like, you know what? 
if you put me back in this position again, I will I, like I won't, you know, abuse it the way I was abusing it, you know. Mm -hmm. so, and I was gonna ask you that: How does a 20, 21, 23 year old have thirty five grand to lose in a casino? I was making good money. I always gamble, so like gambling for me was second nature. You know, I grew up 10, 11 years old shooting dice with my friends, and that uh, that rush and that adrenaline to, for gambling just grew. And we went from shooting dollar better dollar to betting five bet five to shooting twenty bet twenty to shooting hundred bet hundred. We was young guys, so just experiencing that it mm -hmm. kind of made me. Uh, you know, losing a dollar, well, it, like if you lose your dollar for the first time, it's gonna hurt you. But right. if you become familiar with just, you know, losing money, gambling, it's not hurting you as much as it would somebody who just did it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so at 10, 11, you're shooting dice. I mean, it people. Was hobby, yeah. It was a hobby. It was really a hobby. Okay. Yeah, like, <laughs> we, we was like, my friend Cliff, he taught, he taught me how to shoot dice. And, I got to see, we started with a dollar, but a dollar. Mm -hmm. That was a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember one time I gambled with my mom's, um, she sent me to the store and I gambled the money. I literally cried to my home to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so you, did you ever get it back? I mean, he gave it back to me. Mom sent me to the store to grab a few things, like mm -hmm. some bread and stuff. Uh, but you know I mean? I think that game taught me a lot. You know, it taught me to not be afraid to uh, risk. Uh, you know, but I come from a, a, a mom who, who gambled. And, I think I get a little bit of it from her too. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so you get the you get a lot from your mom, but yeah. not just the you know just the yeah. gambling. You know the apple didn't yeah, fall yeah. far from the tree from a, for a lot of things mm -hmm. for you. Um, so at ten, you're gambling and you're shooting dice, and you learn this game, and right. you know because obviously you had to learn it to feel confident enough to keep going and to take it from dice to the next level. Like, yeah. what was that like? Like, what did you have to do? What did you? What was your mentality? Um, I, I like? think it was more so like. You know, definitely confidence because you know when you shoot dice, you gotta. It's a game of confidence. You, you're not gonna be shooting dice, uh, you know, not thinking that you're going to win. win. You know, you're gonna always feel as if you're about to hit a lick. Mm -hmm. So shooting with men twice my age, like my friends, brothers, and their uncles. You know, we was the young guys, but you know, shooting with a playing a game full of people, your peers, people older than you. It was different than playing the game against people who. Uh, you know, was your age? Was your age? Mm -hmm. But uh, like that game, it, it was like it gave me a rush, and and it's crazy because I get that same rush doing the events I do. Like when I risk a lot of that money and put it on the line, I get that same rush from the blackjack table or from the dice. Mm. And uh, you know, it's just I think that game just taught me a whole lot. Taught you a lot. Yeah. What a great connection. Taught me, taught me life lessons. Mm -hmm. you know? And it would definitely would do that. However. Larry is not promoting <laughs> no, gambling, not promoting okay? Gambling at all, no. Do not gamble <laughs> to learn your lessons. Do not gamble to learn how to take risks. That is not what he's promoting, but that is what Bet helps him. <laughs> Bet on yourself, not on a <laughs> dice, okay? <laughs> so is it safe to say you come from the streets? Because people look at you and like, man, Larry ain't come from no streets. I saw a post today. <laughs> <laughs> somebody made a post and they tagged me in it. What is it? Somebody else tagged me in it and they said, uh, it said something, but I don't know, I gotta go find it on Instagram, but it was just funny, man. It was something about the streets and everything, but I mean, I would say I, I didn't come from the streets, you mm -hmm. know, like my mom, you know, uh, when I grew up in the Second Ward, uh, I was exposed to the streets. I, I experienced things in the streets, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say I come from the streets, you know. Uh, you know, but, you know, I mean, people, uh, it's kind of tough, because people like, you know, sometimes people be like, you know, he, some people think I may have come from the streets. Some people, uh, then some people don't think I, I come from the streets, but I don't, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I've been around a lot, I, I've seen a lot, you know, and been into things that, you know, a, a, as a kid that, you know, street activities, but, mm -hmm. you know, not a person. You're not a street, nah. you're not a street guy. Nah, nah. It's crazy because so many people want to know how. How Larry is able to do the things he do and be the way that he is, and I've heard a bunch of stories. I mean, I've read in a book, you know, but I've heard a lot of stories and I've heard good stories. I've heard bad stories, but you know, can you clear some of that up for us? Like, you know, how did you do it? You started out doing events or you had a clothing line first. Start off with a clothing line. And you no longer have a clothing line, which is crazy. All right, because when the events started to do well, it's like the clothing line, I feel like I didn't have time for it. And I was making good money. Uh, it was something that, uh, it was like the stepping stone. Mm. And, and to, to get me to where I was going and then the events was a stepping stone to get me to where I was going. I still do it, it makes me good money, but then that was a stepping stone to, you know, become an author and, and, and share my story. And that was a stepping stone to um, 
uh, branched off into the uh, restaurant business and, you know, invest in real estate, you know? So, uh, you know, I think it was just, I followed uh, my heart and, and, and took a lot of risks. But, uh, you know, everybody, everybody life is different. You know, some people try to take the blueprint of what someone else okay. took mm -hmm. and try to do the, do the exact same thing. But, not, you know, you gotta follow, you know, what's for you. And then some people gonna grow at an early age in life, some people gonna grow at a later, later age in yeah. life. And it's just really all about what God has for you. Mm -hmm. you know? So you just gotta you know, keep your heart open, keep your mind open and, you know, follow the path he has for you. you know? Yeah, and see, so you say you take risk, and I know I say it about myself too, but another thing that I would say is that I don't mind stepping out on faith. It's almost like a faith deal. Yeah, you're risky, but you don't mind stepping out on faith. And a lot of times people always say, oh, walk by faith and not by sight, but they're really not ready to step out because it's a risk. All right, so when I dropped out of college and I quit both of my jobs, you know, I was making money, but it wasn't no stability. Mm -hmm. You know, like it was, you know, me like, you know what, I'm going to give up this both of these jobs, stop going to college in order to help my family, but to devote more time to doing what I was doing to, uh, in hopes of making it, you know, much bigger. Right. And, you know, it, it, was, it was nerve wracking, you know, quick both of your jobs. Like I got, I had a car note that, you know, I didn't have many bills, but at 20 years old, but uh, it definitely was nerve wracking, but I think it was the best decision I ever made because. I believe you. I, 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 I went out to work from <laughs> eight to four. And I had to hop in the shower uh, at the pool. Got worked at the pool at Stallings in the seventh mm -hmm. world, and then went from Stallings to Valley. the Valley downtown. Mm -hmm. Worked to eleven, got off, and you know I worked at Chuck E. Cheese, finish line. I worked everywhere, man. And you was always about a dollar. You was at, always about your money. I worked at McDonald's, like you know. So I got my fair share of working and, and realizing this is not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be working a nine to five for anybody. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's, that's real big. You worked in the entertainment industry, and when people hear the entertainment industry, they can take that in a whole lot of different areas. So what exactly did you do in the entertainment industry? Um, I know you're still in it, in a, you know, but like, what did you do in the beginning, the beginning stages of being in the entertainment industry? I think I just, uh, I bridged the gap. Like just uh, being a guy from New Orleans, it's hard to create relationships with people outside of the city because we're not in a market where it's A-list, mm -hmm. you know, we're not a market where you want to see Diddy, Drake, Meek, and all these people. So in order to um, even consider a little dude from New Orleans being involved in the industry, it took me investing in myself and investing into my company to build these relationships. Yeah. You know, not just make money, but build relationships, build relationships. Bring people to the city, you know, my city, and uh, you know, show them that Southern hospitality and in hopes of maybe we build a relationship. and. That formula, not so much focusing on a dollar, but focusing on relationships, put me in a position to build relationships. And uh, I guess people, you know, connect me with the industry because being from New Orleans, we don't have many people that we look at that's connected to the industry. industry or right. When people come in town, like they come into the restaurant or hit me up or come into my parties, you know? So yeah. uh, I think, you know, if I was in LA, it'd be regular. You know, but, right, but, but, but in New Orleans, it's a big deal because that's just not happening right, in New Orleans. Yeah, you know, Ain't nobody we're, else we're doing it. City, we're from a city that, you know, these artists are here if they're on tour or if they're being booked. Mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, I think just kind of bridging that gap. Yeah, so if somebody wanted to do what, you're, what you did in the entertainment industry, if somebody wants to go that route, what would be the, like, the best piece of advice you would give them? I mean, stay consistent because my first... Well, I wouldn't say my first party, but like, I, I lost a lot of money, you know, uh, a lot of things, you know, in the beginning when people didn't show up to a party, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, that kind of, uh, that a drain. Yeah. Know? And, and it's hard. <laughs> That's your second guess, you know? You know, like, you know, back then I, I couldn't calculate, like, I didn't have any memory, right? I couldn't calculate how many people to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I didn't know, I didn't know what to expect myself, so it was like I was rolling the dice, opening the doors and like, all right, cool, man. Let's see, you know, nobody had 11 o'clock, nobody had 12 o'clock, then at 1 o'clock, they may have a bunch of people there. Mm -hmm. So it was just tricky, and I enjoyed, you know, I enjoyed that gamble, not knowing what to expect. Right. Uh, like, you know, just like Blackjack, just like Dice when rolling, you don't know what's coming out until they stop. Yeah. So, uh, I enjoy all You that. enjoy all that? I enjoy it. Okay. So the entertainment industry, you know, made way for, like you said, the book, and then the restaurant, and, um, Larry Morrow um, properties and all of that. Was that strategic? Like, did you 
strategically say, or did you already know that, you know what, I want to have a restaurant, I want to write a book, I want to do real estate, you know, and I want to be in charge of all of these different things, I want it to be me. <laughs> I had no idea, like, with me, like, people think I still got it all figured out to this day, but, you know, I'm still, um, I'm still trying to figure it out, you know, like, before the restaurant opened up, I started to do renovations in August of 2017. July of 2017, I didn't know that I was going to open a restaurant. It was like more like beginning of August that I found out and me and my mom jumped into it. Uh, real estate was something I, I, I wanted to do, mm -hmm. um, but just didn't know how to do it. But I had the opportunity because a friend was going to buy a house, a mentor of mine, so Don Spencer, and he uh, was like, you know what, I was going to get this house, but if you want it, you go ahead and get it. I had the cash available at the time, I went first. And that kind of put my foot in the door. And I got to see, you know, see how everything worked. And just me having a lot of people that's in that industry around me, mm -hmm. mentors and stuff, it just uh, makes it even better because sometimes I don't have to go through what they want to do in order to, uh, you know, because I, I, I had those mentors, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so as far as like the book happened, I was sitting down and meet my publicist and I came with an idea at the table. I'm like, yo, look, I want to write a book. He said, what is it about? I told him, he's like, yo, bro, yeah. that's amazing. And he left from Saki Cat Film Magazine and went straight to somebody that he, co he contacted, like, yo, look, we're trying to write a book. And from there, we started to work on it. It was like a, a year and a half process because uh, we was trying to make it right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it, just, it just worked out, man. Like, I don't have to figure it out. Right, it just fell in place. I don't know. I have a guesstimate of what I feel like my next move is, but I don't have to figure it out. And I'm I'm the type of person I'll hop into, you know, whatever industry and learn what I can learn. And if I like it, if I lose, I'm going to continue to do it until I, you know, really strike gold. You know? Mm-hmm. That's good. Fall, that's almost like saying fall, to, fall down seven, get up eight. Like, you all about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Ain't nothing going to get I, me I down. Think, I think I'm, I'm, I think... I built up my endurance. You know? mm -hmm. My endurance is like, you know, uh, it's not too many things I'm afraid to do. You know? That's big time. So that means if you're not afraid to do it, then you're willing to go out and do it. So something is going to turn over for you. You're meant for greatness because you're not afraid to do anything. That's important. Don't be afraid, y'all. Y'all can't be scared can't be afraid. at all. What the saying is? Scared money, don't, scared, make no money. Scared money <laughs> don't make no money. That's yes, that's the saying. Bro, Marrows has just been open for what, a year? Uh, 14 months. 14 months. 13 months. Yeah. This place, place is always packed. I eat there very often. Yeah, you see you me there. <laughs> you see me there often. But it's always packed. What the hell? Like, who did you even imagine this was going to happen? Like, so when you shoot your shot, you got to always anticipate it. You got to, uh, you got to kind of believe it's going to happen for it to happen. Mm -hmm. If you don't think it's going to happen, then it ain't going to happen. So it's the law of attraction, you gotta speak into existence. And with this restaurant, I told my mom, I said, Mom, wait till we open. Like, we didn't really know what to expect, but I knew how hard I was about to go, and I knew my network. Mm -hmm. I knew the the people I deal with, I knew the support I have, you know, like the city supports big time. And, you know, that's like, I'm so appreciative of that because without people supporting, this wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be possible, that's a fact. And, um, you know, just building a brand, a respectable brand that people can trust in over the years, you know, like, you know, people know that, all right, look, I'm going to a Larimar event, it's going to be popping, and you, you're going to see so-and-so, you're going to see beautiful women, you're going to see, you know, the people come and pop bottles, so you're going to see some celebrities, whatever, and I built up a brand, and I knew that I'll get that same support from my city, mm -hmm. but also the people that I built with in the industry. Yeah. So, three months being open, you had people like Mary J. Blige, Tiana Taylor, Drake, uh, Kenny Burns, Nicole Murphy, just... So many people, man. It, yeah, like, you know, how did you Last year, that's we were open for three months, so we had a five-hour wait to get in. And I actually went to talk to people who waited five hours to get in, and it being a brand that's three months old, it's just like, wow. 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 Definitely a wow But, but you know, like, I can get the people there, but what keeps the people there are, are like, the food, the food and the vibe. So my mom, mm -hmm. she, like... She got the magic hands, you know, so I can't, I can't cook. Yeah, <laughs> so. the vibe there is amazing. Um, one thing you said, though, that I have to backtrack to because the people need to hear this again. Um, it's the law of attraction. You believed and you knew that your restaurant was going to soar. And so when it opened, that's exactly what it did. When people don't believe right. in themselves or believe in what it is that they're putting out, it's hard for it to happen to you. So 
explain some just let us know a little bit more about that because you had to you believe in yourself more than just morals you believe that morals was going to be everything and it is everything but that's why you move the way you move because of that belief system and that law of attraction of you putting yourself out there because you know what's coming back no like i saw someone on instagram and they it was like uh, a person the moment you die yourself is the moment you lost mm. and you know honestly i believe that i can do whatever whatever I want. you want it's like sometimes i'm looking at Buildings. I was a kid going to get jewelry I knew I couldn't afford. I was going to the lot looking at cars I knew I couldn't afford. But, you know, now it's like, you know, I can go to those same lots and get those cars that I didn't want. Mm -hmm. I can go, um, you know, I, sometimes I look at houses I know I can't afford, you know. You just have to, you know, envision it and, uh, you know, you got to go seek it. You, know? you, yeah. can't, you can't sit up there and be like, oh, uh, one, day I, it yeah, one day, I, one day I, I wish I could get this. Or sometimes I, I hear people say, oh, uh, such and such is my dream car. Cool, this can be your dream car, but mm -hmm. I think sometimes you gotta set your your standard much higher. And if you fall short and you end up with a you set your, you set your standard for a uh, Bugatti, you end up with a with a Rolls Royce. You can't be mad at that. You know at I mean? all, you can't be mad at that. You know what I mean, so it, it's just like I think you just gotta up your standards and believe heavy. You know what I mean, like like you gotta have faith. Yeah. You gotta have faith. Gotta you know, have faith. You don't have faith. You don't have nothing. Up your standards, believe heavy, have faith, yep. the law of attraction, speak it into existence. You heard it all from <laughs> Mr. Larry himself, okay? Um, so with morals being so big and everything, you have a top portion of morals. That belongs to you too. No, I don't own a building, but I plan on buying a building. Upstairs is Airbnb's. Um, plan on buying a building, but just working out things with the person who owns it. Okay. Gotcha. Friend of mine owns it as well. So. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we talked about it, and I'm sure soon I'll be purchasing that building. Are you thinking about? Because people ask this question a lot. Because I ask people, you know, ask, you know, what do y'all want me to ask Larry? And they were like, "Is he doing another location? Is he gonna have a bigger location? What's going on with Morrow's? What's the so, expansion of it?" So I've been torn if I want to open up another location in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to keep exclusive, but as far as expanding, definitely going to expand. Trying to expand in the building that we're in. Mm -hmm. So you can't put a fork in the kitchen if you want to right now. Like it's it's like we're limited on space. We've outgrown in, in in a year, and uh, got other restaurant concepts opening up. But the last thing I want to do is move Morrow from where it's at because you know it's like so much happening in location in just a year. Is you know you didn't have so many people walk through. So it's just mm -hmm. to me it's a staple. It's monumental. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get rid of that. Yeah. But, however, we're uh, supposed to be opening up another restaurant concept, a few blocks up the street, much bigger, different. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm constantly looking at different locations every day. I spend a lot of time working on real estate, so something will shake off. Some. You club, heard that? Club working on venues, so something's about to happen. Something is about to happen. I'm excited yeah. about it. So tell me about your first party. You couldn't, you, you, I mean, you had to have thrown a party as a kid or something to know that you could throw a party. You ain't just around here saying, you know what? I'm gonna throw a party. Like, tell me about your first party. What's so going on? when I was a kid, uh, a friend of mine, mom, she threw a party for us. We had a little group called Young Stunners. What, you was a rapper? No, it was just like, a, like you know, in, in high school, they had, everybody had groups. Like, well, I'm 28, so <laughs> everybody had like that, like, Young stunners there, like uh, prep stars, they had all types of stuff. What y'all did though? We did nothing. <laughs> That's the thing. We had all another <laughs> business. We had, we had leather business and everything, right? And she used to do these parties for us. And um, we used to be, like pack, like at the labor union hall and everything. Like pack thousands of kids. Wow. So I don't know if that's what initiated it, but I know that. As time went on, I started like I was I was doing like little team parties inside Hush. Mm -hmm. But when I did my first big party on my own, I ran out of space and made you know about eleven thousand dollars between me and a friend. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like nineteen years old, I'm like oh shit, it's on. Yeah. <laughs> like, me, I'm a type like <laughs> if you give me an inch, you gonna like, take a mile. Yeah. Like, if I see it working, <laughs> if I see it working, oh man, it, it's it's over. Like that's not like. I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah. You know, so. That's huge, yo. You have to take advantage of opportunities that's presented gotcha. to you. You have to take opportunity advantage. Opportunity will always be there. Yeah. It will not always be there. You believe opportunity come twice? Because some people think that that same opportunity will come twice. Nah, I always say this. You prepare yourself now because, you know, so I spend my time preparing myself mentally, physically, working out mentally by thinking, meditating, praying, whatever. Um, 
and, and mentally, physically, and spiritually. I mean, you got to, like, prepare yourself because you never know what life may throw at you. And you want to be prepared for whatever it may be. So when opportunity come knocking on my door, I'm up early waiting for it. You know, some people are in bed till 10 o'clock. Uh, like, every morning I wake up at 6, 30, 7 o'clock, I work out, start my day off like that. And some people just not ready for the opportunity. Like, you shouldn't wait for it to come to get prepared. You should be prepared for, for it. it to come. Mm -hmm. Not knowing what it may be, but preparing yourself to be well-rounded, you know, mentally in the right place, spiritually in the right place, and physically, you know, prep for it. You know? Yeah. So that's why people, you know, opportunity to come and, and pass by, yeah, and mm -hmm. you know, it may not come back around, or it may come back 20 years later. Yes, and by now it's just like you didn't. Uh, opportunity, I ain't missing my opportunity. I'm up too early for it. Okay. I'm up too early for it. I like that big time. Um, so I hear Drea was your first, yep. you know, celebrity to come at a, to an event for you. Mm -hmm. But before Drea came, what made you feel like you needed to add celebrities in? Like, how did that? Because you were just throwing parties, right? It was like I was 20 at the time, and it was when I first started. And I don't know why I was like, just book Drea, we book Drea. It worked out, you know, and, and, and that and that right that whole situation taught me a whole lot because a little dude from New Orleans, twenty years old, booking an artist, they come well booking a reality star coming to New Orleans, just showing that, you know, just, just showing the hospitality. And from there a relationship grew. Um and that helped, you know, guide and, you know, create my blueprint. Mm -hmm. Because when I saw that all of that grew from just being myself. Mm -hmm. I was more inspired to be myself be and not be, you know, somebody else. Because when, when you know that happened, I, you know, it was me being. Mm -hmm. And so uh, tell them the story though, because I know the story, <laughs> but I need them to learn this lesson. There's a right. lesson in it's this lesson. story, and I think you should tell the people the story. Y'all need to hear the story, and at this point, pay very close attention. <laughs> <laughs> so Drea came to New Orleans. When she came to New Orleans. Um, she wanted to get her nails done. So we went to the nail shop. And, you know, it was like three females. Well, it was two and hundred friends and a manager. So it was four people, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was four people. And um, they wanted to get their nails done, to get their nails done. I, I told my partner at the time, I'm like, yo, let's go half on it. He didn't want to. I paid for it. And all right, cool, we went to the next location. They all went to go eat. Um, and uh, we went to Drago's. Nice to bring everybody to Drago's. Um, I told him, let's go half on it. I won't half on it. So I covered it. And you know, not trying to like cover it on like, oh, I'm covering the bill. Like, all right, cool. I ain't tripping. I'm going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. I just feel like we should be, you know, they're our guests. Let's right. Show you should show them a good time. So after that, uh, you know, went to the club. We had a good time. At the end of the day, like, yo, out of all the cities you went to, you being the youngest, you being 20 years old, you took care of us more than anybody. You showed mm -hmm. us a lot of love. And this was in December of eight years ago when I was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And they, they extended the invite, they were, look, come to uh, LA. Uh, I went to LA, I spent New Year's with them, and they showed me so much. I was, my first time going to LA. And that right there was like, you know, a young guy going way to LA, 20 years old, and they introduced me to all these people. I'm like, how am I here? I didn't do nothing. Like, I was with, like, we was, like I was with her, and we went, I, I saw a cop Maserati, she was in a hoopty. Went to Maserati, did this shit. She went drop cash on it. It was like, it was th th this kid who just was being himself. Mm -hmm. He ended up in this position, so that taught me a whole lot. And I made sure that I continued to be myself moving forward, and and just let things build organic. Like I wasn't like, oh, being all in the face. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes even though I was young, you know, a, a lot of guys. I deal with a lot of female um, artists or actors, whatever it may be, and. You know, a lot of guys, their approach is like, you know, they, they sometimes they want to holler. Holler. Mm -hmm. I'm more so was about the relationship. So I have a lot of relationships with a lot of females in the industry because, you know, I wasn't the guy trying to. Trying to get at them. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was trying to build something. Mm -hmm. So all that, like, you know, helped me grow and build and, you know, taught me a whole lot. Taught me life lessons at 20 years old that I still use to this day, mm -hmm. continue to use, and just like letting things organically happen. Happen. That's it. Yeah, and so the lesson from that is to literally be yourself, but hospitality takes takes a high precedence over a lot of things. 
the fact that you took care of the bill, you took care of all these different things. Not that she asked you because you knew she could have handled it, but the fact of your you being has, you know hospitable and for her now it's like no, you showing her that made her feel like no. Now I found a I can consider this a friend or no. I'm gonna bring him on and show him some stuff. She was more willing to be, you know. Yeah, like one like invited like me, 20 years old. I don't, she's probably like five, seven years older, man. Like invited me to LA, you know. First time seeing that day, like we was in church on New Year's Eve, we was chilling, like just showing around the city, introducing the people that it's crazy because a guy who she introduced me to, who's a who's a party promoter, uh, his group was called LA Finest. He was at my restaurant the other day, like yo fam, I'm in town, and we stayed connected for the past eight years. Mm -hmm. and he was eating at my restaurant last week. Came stop by, we sit down chopping it up, and it's crazy that manifested from 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 that yeah from during yes. that situation. So uh, you know, it, it, and I always believe in building relationships, not mm -hmm. burning them, you know? Like, no dollar amount, no nothing's gonna make me want to burn a building. Burn a Sometimes you have to fall back in situations, but, uh, you know, you just fall back. You know, you just don't burn the bridge. Mm -hmm. Bridges are meant to be crossed. Yeah. yeah, that's real good. And I hear she talks very highly of you, so that's amazing that, that just being yourself, being who you are, not wanting anything in return, got you what, you know, what you wasn't expecting it helps right. a whole lot with everything that's going on now. Yep. You talked about your clothing line before, yep. and you said you know you let it go because you was going in another direction. You know all of that evolution and leveling up and things of that sort. Um, I wanted to talk about that with you a little bit because I started a clothing line, and then I don't really do it too much. Um, was well, more of I have an online clothing boutique, and I don't really do it too much because I'm doing other things. But that doesn't mean that you know I'm still <coughs> pretty safe. You know boutique. But I just want a little insight from you for that, um, because it was said that you were a curator. Am I saying it right? Curator. You're a curator, and I don't know if everybody might not understand what it is, but it's almost the fact of you were doing so many different things that there is no title. They can't say, oh, that's Larry Morrow, the party promoter, or that's Larry Morrow, the restaurant owner, or, you know, no, you are a curator because you have multiple things going on. You are a multiple, you know. And, and, and that title right there comes from like me and Karen Sibyl having a conversation. And she, she, she introduced me to somebody. She was like, yeah, this is my friend Larry, promoter from Royal. And she's like, wait, I don't want to call it, cause I hate being called a promoter because I look at myself as much more than just a promoter. Mm -hmm. A promoter is somebody who promotes events and, you know, promote events. I do much mm -hmm. more on a bigger scale, I feel. And um, she's like, wait, I can't call it a promoter. A part of promoter. I got to, we got to think of another title. So it was like, uh, just going back and forth. Like, oh, wait, curator or something. So we stuck with curator and I liked it because that's what I do. I curate vibes, like curate things. I, you know, just make things happen and uh, party promote is such a, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it just keeps you in one lane. Like, exactly. this is who you are and you're and so honestly, much beyond part it. of me wanting to do this book was to get out that box because people, you know, people label you as this, like, oh, oh you're just a promoter. Mm -hmm. Nah, like, I'm not a promoter. Like, go look me up, go Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm an yeah. entrepreneur and mm -hmm. an entrepreneur is a person who jumps off that cliff and builds that plane on the way down. And that's what I do, you know, I'm not afraid to do it. I know where I'm going. I know how I'm going to get there. It's just, you know, sometimes you got to be patient and, and pace yourself because when I didn't pace myself, I lost everything. Yeah. You know, being 22, 23 uh, years old, I had, I had a restaurant at that age, the airport was in Wings on Canal Street. A lot of people know, a lot of people don't know. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know that, you know, that restaurant taught me a whole lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it was one of the adventures that I felt. You know what I mean? Uh, I learned a lot of lessons. Like I invested a lot of money into it. Four or five months later, it just didn't work out. You mm -hmm. know, well, it wasn't that the people weren't coming. My mom ended up getting she pregnant, and you know, you know, mom's being pregnant. We getting into it. Me being a young guy, not being able to control my emotions, mm -hmm. waking up in the morning at one point having to go to the store. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. I wanted to be out making money and not tied down to a business. To the business, yeah. I wasn't prepared for that. I was a I wasn't mature enough. Mm -hmm. I wasn't so um that closed down. I told people like well it closed down because um I forgot why I told them it closed down, but you know I, It was a lot. 
Yeah, but <laughs> I, I was hurt. Like, you know, it was hard for me to shut that shut business that down business because up. I felt like I failed. Mm -hmm. You know, and I lost a lot of money. So that's why I call 2013 the best worst year of my life because I lost so much, but I learned so much more because the restaurant, the casino, and, you know, all that happened in one year. And, you know, like I pretty much was in the casino trying to bounce back from the L I took from the restaurant, trying to go catch up on that money. And I lost the 35000 And it was just like, you know, it was just stressful because I wasn't pacing myself. And now it's like, you know what? You can go make these moves, but you gotta pace yourself. Take those risks, but pace yourself pace because yourself. you don't wanna have to be at zero again. Yeah. You know? Like in my book, it talks about zero, how zero is a great number to be at. Yeah. Because it's a fresh start. Yeah. It's no a new day, well. it's a new day, and the only way you can go is up. Oh. So people are afraid of being, like, of being at the bottom, but and you can't go lower than zero. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, on, on, only thing you can do is go up, and zero taught me, and it will teach anybody, anybody definitely life will. lessons. It's going to mm -hmm. teach you so much about you. It's going to bring out different sides of you that you never knew. Mm -hmm. And that's what it did for me. So uh, that taught me, like, at this current moment that I got to pace myself because when I was in a you know, position at 22, uh, what I felt like was a good position, uh, I wasn't pacing myself, but I was young, man. I was... Yeah. Now, now it counts for real. Yeah, it definitely you counts for real. Afford, you, can, <laughs> you can't afford to make mistakes when you're younger, even when you're older. But you gotta make sure that you, you know, just don't mess it up. You know. Yeah, I just really I wanted to put that out there for the people to know. You know, and even for myself, because I found confirmation and I found comfort in that situation with you for my own story. Mm -hmm. Um, because I was literally just going through something and I saw this about you and I was like, wait. That's yeah. it. Um, yeah. About the curated situation, oh, yeah, about yeah. not being called, you know, because and with, even with the clothing line, I'm like, I never even knew he had that. And now I'll look at him and I'm yeah, sitting yeah, here I'm like watching, trying yeah. to hold on to something. It's like, no, God is elevating and bringing you in a whole nother place, but, you know, embrace it. And you, you know, like you're a great example of not holding on, like embracing the level up, you know, embracing the growth that is happening, you know. I mean, some things are meant just to get you to that next level, you know, like if you're truly passionate about it, of course you'll hang on to it, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's like sometimes you gotta let go of what, let go of that in order to grow, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sure God has bigger plans for us. I'm sure of that too. Man, The Breakfast Club? <laughs> really? The Breakfast Club, the breakfast Larry? Club. <laughs> called me and told me I was gonna be on there. It was like a month out and I was like the toughest month of my life because I'm literally trying to train for this. Like I'm training for the Olympics <laughs> or something. And Cause it, it's the breakfast club. It, it, I was so nervous to the point that I did not want to go on breakfast club. Oh my I was that nervous and I was just truly overthinking it. I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. I remember I was in the hotel, me and JT before I uh, went over there that morning in New York. And I got like I got on my knees and prayed and it's just like God just helped me articulate to the world what I like, you know, you don't wanna just mess up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when I got there I wasn't even really that nervous, but I felt comfortable because Envy, Angela mm -hmm. that's close, And those are people. That's close friends of mine. Like mm -hmm. I talk to Envy today and you know, that's just genuine individuals who just always look out for me. Like, I need him to plug some things for me. He called the person on three we were like, yo, look, this is my man's mom's and grandma's always take care of me and everything. Make mm -hmm. sure you look out for him, like this family. And that's like that's priceless, you know, yeah. like building those relationships with people who who uh, who see bigger in you and who, who just genuinely ride yeah. with you. Right? Yeah. And the trust, it's a trust level yeah. there too. Like it's a, and, that's and, a lot. And, 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 and that's a big factor because part of the reasons why um, a lot of people I've built with over the years is like your energy, I like your energy. I can rock with you. I like your energy. Oh my God, you but sound so familiar. I don't, I'm never over, overbearing. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to be, you know, I'm never the person thinking I know too much. In the room, I'm never the person trying to be too cocky. When I was younger, like like years ago, I, I feel like I had to tone it down because, you know, like I thought I was a rapper. <laughs> I thought I was a rapper. I'm hanging out with rappers. You know what I mean, like, you know, like I'm with Fab, I'm with everybody. I'm like, you know what I'm, I'm a rapper. Got bust down Rolexes. Got and out my mind was just in the wrong place. I'm like, no damn rapper, man. I want to sell my watch, bought a house. You know, uh -huh. like. I wasn't like, I had a, I went through that phase and I think a lot of young men go through that phase because that's what society teaches us. Teaches us, that's a fact. You know, we feel like we gotta have the baddest woman, we gotta have the watches, the mm -hmm. cars, the this and that, man. All the material things. All I want is to make sure that my family's comfortable, I can take care of mine and you know, just 
live life and but live it without any any limitations. Like I want to be able to go hop on my jet and go to Ibiza if I want to. You know, like come on, jet. Yeah, You're speaking it. Yeah. Well, so, let me find so, out you got a jet somewhere. I was coming. I got it. I just can't afford it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't afford it, but but uh, you know I want to be able to do those things. But I know it's a process, and you know it's not about the the shiny things. It's not about uh, just being able to take care of my people is what is going to make me happy and take care of people around me and just help people and inspire people. That's what, you know, I'm in it for because that's what keeps me going. Like having kids or just people like men older than me hopping my DMs. I never had people run up to me like a guy run up to me like, yo, you're, you're my idol. Can I take a picture? Like what? Idol? I'm your idol. Mm -hmm. But that happened to me on, on, on a few different occasions. I've been in... I'd have been in LA, walk off the elevator, like, yo, you Larry Morrow, dude from Toronto, like, yo, I'm, I want to get your book. I go upstairs and give him a book. Mm -hmm. Stop, people stop me in the club in Atlanta, take pictures, and I'm like, yo, what the hell is going on? But it's like being able to be on platforms like Breakfast Club, expose you to so many more people. Yeah. Uh, Forbes List, Black Enterprise, and all these different platforms What's put me in front of a lot of people who, who, who believe in my journey and, mm -hmm. and, and what I stand for. So, like, you know, even like I got book orders in London, Toronto, you know, all over the U.S. And that's mind blowing. But it just means that God's doing something amazing in your life. Mm -hmm. And whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Keep doing it. You know? And that's crazy. That's how when I sent you that picture of the guy who I met at the restaurant and he was like, uh, yeah. he was telling me about he, he the experience yeah. he did. And I, I want to say that, that you actually sent the book out, you yeah. know, and he wanted that book. And I'm like, you know what? I could, I could, I could get Larry for you. And literally, and when I told you about it, you sent the book out. That says a lot about you. It's just a book, you know what I'm saying? He didn't live around here. He could have said it and been like, okay, whatever. But you made it your business to make sure that that man got that book. So that speaks a lot about you as an individual. You know what I'm saying? So thank you so much for that because I called him. I was like, listen, you got your book? He was like, yes, I got my book. Thank you so much. You know, tell him I said thank you. I'm going to send him a DM, but make sure you let him know that I appreciate that. So thank you for that, you know. Yeah, it's, it's real humbling just knowing people like, uh, you know, just meeting people or just hearing people like, just some of the things people tell me just like, you know, you just never believe that people look at you this way because I don't look at myself or perceive myself the way the world you know, do. Uh, other people do, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, I heard a story on Instagram, it was like this guy, he couldn't, he was in the hood around a bunch of people doing the complete opposite of him, but he never knew he had a shiny collar. He was a dog, right? There was dogs in the hood, he didn't know he had the shiny pink collar on his neck because he couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. Everybody was looking at him saw the shiny pink collar, and it's just that, you know, he couldn't see himself, himself. the way other people seen him. He didn't know he had that, that ice around his neck, you know, so uh, when people, say things like that, it's like, damn, man, I can't believe, like, you know, I, sometimes I go home, I tell my girlfriend, like, man, look, this happened today, this happened. And they be like, damn, like, she didn't deal with me, and people run up on me like, yo, man, can I get a picture? Mm -hmm. Like, man, what, what is going on? And she just, like, just sit back and just, like, just laughing, like, because it's, you know, I haven't even begun to do what I'm going to do. What you going to do? So it's like, if, if that's happening now, then, you know, five years from now. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> The crazy thing though is, on the Breakfast Club, you was handing out gifts. Yeah. Barney's, this, I'm looking around like, wait, hold up. What I give? I'm looking for my gift, you know? That's just, and it speaks who you are. You know, you went out, Angela Yee was her birthday, you know, that's your people, you know, you took care of her, you know. Keep being that person that you are. That's that's really, that's a really good trait about you. Um, they had a lot of good things to say about you. And you spoke on Forbes. Forbes? Like you hit Forbes and tell me, I just want to know what went through your mind. Like when you, did they call you? Did they email you? Like how did that go? Like, you know, so what was your thought process or what was the emotions that you were feeling at that time? I mean, what does that mean to you? I thought it was dope, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, like it was more so like that for Breakfast Club because this was more of like a, you know, uh, like a phone thing, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so it was cool, but, uh, it, it just was like, you know, like, it, it was motivating, but I'm like, you know what? I don't let things excite me too much mm -hmm. because I feel like that's how you get comfortable. That's you know? how you get comfortable. It, it, it was definitely exciting, don't get me wrong, but to be on that platform, but, you know, so much excitement. <laughs> so much excitement allow, like, you know, you think you the shit. Yeah. And then that's, you start smelling your shit and <laughs> you start, like, you know. Look, you're trying to make sure you don't smell it. You're trying to keep 
Enough Why you to not smell it. You got to because you got to stay grounded, man. That's one thing I learned over the years. Like, you got to stay humble. You got to stay grounded. You got to, you know, remain, try to remain that same individual because when life happens and you people start to change and, you know, you grow, it's just like, I don't want to be that person. Yeah. You know, so I, I let, like, you know, I take it in. But, like I said, like, it's it's only the beginning stage. So, so much more work to do. So, you know, you're going to see bigger things than falls. You're going to see, you know, I just know, like, I just know whether it's like a, a TV show or a movie, whatever. I know it's coming soon or something like that because I've been getting reached out to by a lot of um, networks, you mm-hmm. know, like Skype calls, like they want to set up interviews, TV, I think maybe like food networks. They, they can't, sometimes they can't tell us, but I like, know this is probably one of the biggest networks, networks in right. America, mm-hmm. well, in the world. And they want to interview, they want to interview my mom, interview people around me. So. I've been on a lot of calls like that, emails, and just people reaching out. So I know that, you know. There's bigger and better. It, the things are coming. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it is, mm-hmm. but I'm preparing myself for it. There you go, because you're up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Six, you ready for it. The yeah. opportunity ain't about to pass you up and because you're ready can't, for it. Can't. I will gun it down. Come on. You heard that, right? If y'all, I'm telling you, this is the mentality to have. People think people like us are crazy. Like, no. no. This is what it's all about. Like, literally. Um, Larry, you're 28. I'm old. No, mm-hmm. you're not. However, <laughs> you are like, no, like, li- honestly, you've been in, you've been on a breakfast club, you've been in Forbes, you've been in Black and Surprise, you've been in all these different things at 28. You haven't even hit your 30s yet. Yeah. So, I mean, how does that make you feel? Like, like you know, because me, little old me over here, I'm like, okay, damn, May was so good for me. Things are starting to line up in June for me right now, but I'm like, okay, like, literally, I'm always like, is June, is the next month gonna beat the month before? Like, I'm in- anticipating it, but I'm just like, is it gonna, what's about to happen? So how are you feeling about turning 30? Like, okay, when I make 30, my 30 is about to be lit. Like, how, that, how does that make you feel? I mean, my thing, like, since I really, like, I've been on like a run, you know what I mean? And this ain't like, I've been like on like a, um, you know, for the past years, like, each year, it's just like, I would level up, level up, level up, level up. And I don't plan on stopping. Sometimes I'm like, damn, I'm going to top this year. But it just continue to do what I do, but on a larger scale, take bigger risks, uh, and just make bigger moves. Like, I believe that, you know, this year I'm going to top last year. I'm going to top the year after that. And 30, it's just going to mark like a, a a period in my life where it's just, it's time to go to a whole other level. A whole level. other so, level. <laughs> but, but also just learning <clears throat> that, you know, it's just not money, it's credit, it's finances, it's it's taxes, it's learning about all of this stuff that, you know, we often don't get the knowledge of at a younger at age. Young age yeah. To where when we do start making money, we get a tax problem, we get uh, just financial, just, just everything, we don't have credit. So I think that's important and, and, and that's like, I work, like you gotta work on your credit, you gotta work on your finances, your taxes, like you work your muscles or your, your, mm-hmm. your, your mind, whatever. And that's why I'm at in my life, like, trying to get all that situated because I've used my money for a long time. I want to be able to buy this building with the bank's money, you know. I, I don't want to have to keep digging in my pocket. You say that, you talk about that too. And, you no, know, that's important. Like, you gotta, we got to learn how to, you know, uh, you, like, utilize our resources, yeah. you know. Like, use the bank. The bank is there for you to use. Pay a 5% interest rate, drop your 25% down for your investment. Whatever, like you can do that. You don't have to go drop cash because at one time I thought cash was key. Yeah, and that's what I do. You gotta have cash on hand always, but that's why you go get the other things financed. You don't have to use all your cash. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine told me, like, I went bought a home, I, I dropped a, a large amount of money down on it. He said, Now, let me break this down to he's a banker, but he's also like a guru in real estate. He said, You could have financed five projects by putting 20% down on each one of these projects and made five times the money. But instead, you drop all that cash cash on one project. Now you're only making money one time. time. You could have made it five times by doing five projects. I put 20% down on each one. Think about it. You heard that? So I'm like, man, you're right. (laughs) I was like, oh, you got to use your cash. Nah, man. Uh Use the bank's money. Use the bank's money. In front of me, like Gerald Baptiste. I've been on this out like seven years old. He told me this a long time ago. And he was like, use OPM. I said, what's OPM? He said, other people's money. Other people's money. And so basically use the bank's money. Like, you know, it, use your money. You can use your money, but at the end of the day, the goal is to have your cash on hand so you can 
Cause you opportunity pass you by if you're not you know if you if you don't have the cash you know ready for it. So that is a fact. You know, you know, the bigger you grow, the the bigger uh, you know opportunities you run into sometimes. And if you don't have the cash available to it, I mean for it, it's just like you will lose it, you'll miss it. Yeah, that's real good. That's another lesson, y'all. Larry is dropping nuggets for y'all. Okay, so I hope y'all got y'all pen. <laughs> you dropping them. I hope they got their pen and paper uh, because um <laughs> it's getting real in here. In your book, you said um. There are no, there is no such thing as self-made men nope. and women. Nope. Uh, because it's like when I started to grow more, it's when I realized that I could do it all on my own. Mm -hmm. And I met this guy named JT, which is my publicist, my partner, my, my good friend. And we started working hand in hand and he helped grow me and I helped grow him. You know what I mean? It was like we were scratching each other back. And I couldn't have done all that if I was like, you know what? Let me do all this stuff on my own. Because at one point, that's all I want to do. I want to do everything on my oh, own. Yeah. But when you're trying to grow and you're trying to build an empire, you can't be you can't be trying to build a house and be the framer, be the plumber, be the electrician, be the uh, the roofer. You gotta like be able to sub or partner with people who's going to handle that job. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's one thing I realized. And then you know, working with him, we helping each other grow. And then getting um, uh, Diori, she's my assistant, but she's like a big key factor to everything we do. Um, and just partnering with, working with individuals who's gonna, you know, help each other grow. We can help each, like we help each other. Mm -hmm. uh, that's important. So you know, self-made is like, all right, I'm self-made. I've done it on my own. You know, like, no, like, you know, right. truthfully, when you when you're trying to go to a certain level, yeah. at, at one point in your life, like you, you could do, do it on you your own. You can do it on your own, yeah, but that's what it is. Yeah. Like, you're gonna need, you're gonna need help. people, so, definitely. Uh, that's something I learned, you know, over the years of uh, just entrepreneurship, you know, just, yeah. just that journey. Yeah, I thought that was really good when I read that. I was like, you know what, this is true, you know, because we're quick to say, I did it, I did it, but it's not a, it, especially when you're going to other places. So everybody knows you're in a relationship, and I'm sure a lot of people are mad that you're in a relationship, but everybody knows <laughs> <laughs> that you're in a relationship. So tell us about the beautiful Scully. <laughs> I mean, I'll have you know that she's from around my way, you know. Where are you from? Country girl, booty, Ama, all oh, of that. She's the opposite. She's from, she grew up in the same neighborhood I grew up in. What neighborhood? Seven Ward. In Seven Ward? Yeah, her family I'm never back like around, but yeah, she stayed out that way. She stayed, definitely okay. stayed out that way. I'm like, wait, I know her people, you know, right. in that uh, area. So tell us about Tell us about that. Like, how did she, how did Scully get your attention? And she, you know. So we grew up in the same neighborhood. Uh, me and my homies would sit at the barbershop right across the street from Dr. McKenna's office. That's like uh, a close relative of hers. And we would see her and her sister walk into the shop every now and then. And we mm -hmm. all just looking like, oh, we gonna shoot. But they was always the ones playing hard to get. <laughs> Like nobody could do it. And this when we was like young, like 19 years old, 18 years old. And you know, after what, like, you know, after just like, you know, conversing, not not really talking, like I'll see her say hello, try to get at it, she act funny, you know, so I just believe in timing and years and years back, uh, she used to come to my parties, I used to always flirt with her because I always like was interested in her. Mm -hmm. And um just one year we just, you know, we just started, you know, talking and Talk for a year and then decided to you know, be official and you know it, it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> and it's working out. It is. You can tell. You can you can see it. Um, how does she take your busy life, your huge success, your connection to the celebrities? Like, how does she deal with that? She handles it pretty well. Like she, she is a. Uh, she understands that you know, like I enjoy, like I, I like to work. You know what I mean? I love what I do and where I'm trying to go and where I'm trying to take us. So she don't really bother me when it comes to work. She is, she's very mature. She's 26, but very mature and handles things a lot differently. Like, it's been situations where most women snap out and she remain calm, like, you know, mm -hmm. and, and handles it maturely. Mm -hmm. And I always respect that about her because, uh, you know, that's tough, you know, even as a man, like, it's always hard to, handle things so mature, mm -hmm. but she always like handles it like a woman, you know, like just certain things that like, you know, and just being like, I bring her around and, and she, everybody love her. She's just a, a easy, a person easy to like to yeah, love. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, she, she, she don't really, she don't really, honestly, she don't really trip. Like, 
at all. She don't really trip at all. Like, she really like supports everything I do. She's always there. Like whatever I need, she got me. So you know, it's just it's just it's just amazing to have a person who understand you know your work and you know what I do because being in the industry I'm in, mm -hmm. nightlife, you know, dealing with a lot of people, it's tough for anyone. You know what I mean? But then some women, like, just because it's tough and knowing this is what I do, they'll, you know, click out for no reason. Mm -hmm. She don't do that. Like, she allowed me to handle my business and, you know, we live our life, have a good time, we travel, we do whatever. Yeah. But, like, like I said, she she's definitely a, a unique individual. That's real good. Um, you got any, any nuggets for the people who deal with people in your situation that are probably dealing with different things, like from their spouse or their you know, partner, uh, you know, what is it like to, you know, how could they, because for me, for an example, being busy, always about work, all those different things, sometimes it's hard to spend as much quality time as you would want to spend, or sometimes it's harder to do, you know, even though you go on trips and do different things like that, not everybody's in a position to be able to take the time out to do that, so they're on work, 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 so what would be your advice to someone who deals with a partner that's building a business, or building something, or working a lot, or working hard? I mean, I would just say, like, you got to find somebody who understands you and, you know, this is who I was prior to us getting together. Like, I'm a hard worker and I, I spend a lot of time working and sometimes I got to, like, I got to stop because I got to make sure that I give her the time that, you know, like, we got to make sure we spend time together. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's just finding that balance, you know, like, yeah. you know, you, you work you work a lot, but you got to make sure you make time for home, make sure I'm home good. Um, so, like, you know, we go to movies a lot, we chill, we go eat, you know, we just... We have fun like Sundays is all day, you know what I mean? Like we just like that's like our day, like since we got together, we just love to like do things on Sunday. On we Sunday. might go eat brunch at the restaurant and just chill. Summertime we just do a lot of festivals and stuff. Um but uh I mean I would just say find your person who understand you, you know. When you find somebody who understand you, it won't be as tough because they understand who you are, what your dreams and aspirations are and what's it gonna take to get there. Yeah. You know, where are you uh, going? And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you're trying to get to it, it's going to take a lot of time and energy and and just just the grind, you know? Like, you're not going to... If you're going to become this person that you want to be, mm -hmm. you have to be with somebody who's going to understand that, all right, this is what we got to do in order to get to this, get here. It's either we're going to do it now or we're going to be spending our 40s and 50s working our ass off. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to work my ass off now and I'm going to enjoy retirement or wherever we go at in life. You know, when we have much older, you know? Mm hmm So. That's good. So, I hear you got a non-profit organization. So, yes, I have a non-profit. I haven't used it. I stopped because uh, I did an event and non-profits are a trip. And I, I've read on so many non-profit okay. things. So, I said, you know what? Let me, let me put this on pause until I find somebody to run this. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to run into any problems with it. Government, nothing, mm -hmm. you know? So, that's tricky. People start nonprofits, they do it, and they start nonprofits for the wrong reason to shelter money, do whatever, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And find themselves in problems. And I don't want no problems. You don't want no problems. <laughs> I, <don't> problems. <laughs> I hear that. You talked about having mentors and different things like that. Um, is there, do you have like a mentorship program, uh, you know, something like that? Do you, are, are you a mentor to, you know, anybody and different things like that? Yeah, uh, I talk about having mentors because I believe they are important. And no, I do not have any mentorship programs as of now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just more so something that's being worked on. And once it's put together, it will we'll definitely be doing it. But we're putting together events like I shot out an email like one this morning to my publishers and my assistant and about some few, about some things that we're doing and something that we talked about when I saw at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. I shot that to them. I pretty much put everything together. Like, yo, look, this is what we're doing. I elaborate on it, you know? So, um, we have things coming like for men, uh, men empowerment because it's not really men empowerment. Mm -hmm. so, so we we got we got things coming, but we just um, you know it, it's just a matter of getting it done. Getting you know, it done. There's just so many moving pieces that we gotta start all over. Like all right, cool, we gotta really knock things out. Told you, bring, told you, bring me on. Well, come on, see, we need you. Come on, bring me on the team. Well, I, got <laughs> I got you. I got you. Um, so this is a crazy thing. Throughout this entire interview, you have said something about relationships. Literally, every question I've asked you, you've said something about building a relationship or maintaining a relationship or having a relationship and different things of that sort about how it's not more so about the money, but 
about the relationship, about burning bridges and different things like that. Um, I'm huge on relationships, huge, but <clears throat> help people understand why that is so important to build these relationships. Cause people burn bridges like crazy. They always saying no new friends. I, I ain't doing none of that. I can't, you can't, you know, so help people understand, you know, like why is it so important for you to be open for you to maintain these relationships, for you to build relationships. Cause like I saw in your book, you talked about, um, kind of, uh, people who collaborators, you talked about, you know, promoters, you talked about all these different things that are part, you know, relationships. Yeah, I think like, you know, like to say relationships are bridges that are meant to be crossed and bridges aren't meant to be burned. So it's just like, you know, with me, you know, you can have money, but you can have all the money in the world, but have no friends. Mm -hmm. And you and, and, and just say one day you just down on luck and you broke, but you got no friends. You have no relationship. So what do you have then? You know, relationships are like equity. It's also, it's valuable. Like it's, it's people who can help you get out of situations, you know, that sometimes money can't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, I saw what worked for me and how that not just focusing on the money, like focusing on the relationships and building relationships put me in a position to make a lot of money, oh, money. by having relationships. Like at one point I was going through booking agents to book people. Mm -hmm. But like I have relationships with so many people to where I can call DJ Envy just like today and he put me on the phone with people like, yo, look, this is my brother, take care of him. And, and, and like, like I said, that's valuable, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to connect with different individuals and it's coming from a valuable source so they look at you as family because like yo this is my dude he's down to you you good yeah so um you know it's 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 like it's important just to maintain those relationships because like i said bridges are meant to be crossed not mm -hmm. and at some point if you go to west bank you got to come back on this side you definitely and have to come back <laughs> and, 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 and in order to come back you got to go across the crescent city bridge or uh -huh. you across the Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. well i don't care where you're going you got to connect somewhere so it's like you know keep them bridges up you know what yeah I mean? don't burn all that shit like all right cool if, if y'all not seeing eye to eye and it's not good for you right now cool take a step back mm -hmm. but don't burn the bridge keep the bridge alive keep the bridge alive, <laughs> keep alive. do not burn the bridge okay step back but <laughs> don't burn the bridge no. um you know people but, but, but let me say this okay. i think i've learned to handle my emotions and because dealing with so many people in the industry i'm in and, and I deal with men with egos. Yeah. People come up to the club. When, when, when people walk up to the door, it's like they automatically got so much money now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes they take your kindness for weakness and, like, people forget. You know what I mean? And it's like I've learned through all those situations to control my emotions because emotions will set the bridge on fire. Yes. And, you know, you just got to fall back. You know what I mean? You got to mm -hmm. just, like... I, I think I think relationships building with people is an art. It's not something that everybody can do. And I think it's an art that I've learned to, you know, it's a canvas I learned to paint on, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, you know, you just gotta learn to control those emotions. Cause first. that means if you're controlling your emotions, that means you have to let down your ego sometimes, you know, or your yeah, pride. You, know, you have like, to put yourself- Imagine when people come to the door like, yeah, man, I'm here. I, I pay X amount of for a section, like, you know, trying to get in. Like, you think that, you know, God, walked up to the door and, and you gotta just like open up like nah you're not God man like you gotta follow the protocol that you know I got other people in line who pay for sections who pay X amount of hours mm -hmm. so <clears throat> people just feel like you owe them things when, mm -hmm. and, and, and to keep it a buck like it, it ain't too many people on this earth come on <laughs> you know what I mean like God for one you know what I mean my mother my family mm -hmm. but it ain't too many people that can say I'm indebted to them you know what I mean I'm in debt you know because you know I, I you know you come up to the door, you got an ego, you acting like I owe you something, but it's just people with egos and pride, and you know, when people come around, you know, they, they, they got this spotlight on them and they want to shine, mm -hmm. and that's the people who, you know, uh, just sometimes, shy away from they got you. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, I'm, I've learned to become, become like real chill, you know what I mean? Like, this shit just age me. That's really good. The age must have did it. Cause it's like, imagine people at 28 hanging around Fab, hanging around Diddy, hanging around Floyd Mayweather, hanging around Mary J. Like who, you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta think that that's a big ego. That, that's a big ego boost. Like, no, I can call a DJ Envy right now. I mean. It don't, it don't really bother me more. Like, like somebody asked me the other day, it was like, if, Jay, if you, you ran into Jay-Z, what would you do? And I never met Jay, but it's like, you know, I, I think it would kind of be like, oh, what up Jay? Like, I'm not gonna be like, oh man, let me get a picture. I've learned, like, you know what? 
Why well, I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. And some people go in a room and they don't really, uh, they act like they not supposed to be there. And when you walk in a room and you run all these people, like I was at Diddy Crib when I was 20 years old, like crazy, like you know, I, I was 21. Right after I went on the drill trip, my friend Lowe's, I booked a guy named King Lowe's. I rap, I saw online, popping, uh, and I, I just like, you know, everything about him. So I'm like, you know what, let me book him because he, he can spit his ass off. And uh, we built, man, he came down, and shortly after that, when he left, like, we built a relationship, and he invited me to LA when I was 21. Like, yo, Puff just, uh, I just got signed, what you call it, I'm, I'm, I'm living out in LA now, come out here. Cat older than me. And he was like, come out here. So when I go out there, like, I'm sitting down eating at Neo's, the old Neo's that was on the corner. Mm-hmm. With my mom and my sister, I got the call. I got up from the table, we left, I went got clothes from refreshing and everything, and hopped on a flight that night to go to Puff Career for this private party. And just being around all this stuff, it just kind of like, you know, you can't be that person that's around all of this, but you're like, oh man, give me a picture. Like, that's just annoying. It right? is. <laughs> it's, a, it's annoying because, let me tell you something. I've been like, you know, like I've been in situations where I pull, uh, you know, like I remember one time I was in a, I was in the club and I'm not gonna say who because I don't want to put nobody on blast, but <laughs> it's like I went to, I was, I was at this event, a homie of mine, I'm with him like uh, I had him pull up to the event, Meek so I'm like, oh L, come on man, what you doing, come on, mm-hmm. pull him in the club, and we go in the section and you know I see some guys from New Orleans, and I'm like man, they with me, pull them in, next thing you know. Me, man, yeah, what's up, what's up? I'm like, nigga, embarrassing, man, because I don't, I don't do that. Right. I don't do that, and right. I feel like when you get around, man, you gotta, you can't act like you never been here before. Right. You gotta like, you gotta chill. Like, like, you know, know. like this, this is what it is. Like, yeah. you can't be you no, know, mm-hmm. like, you can't be a male groupie. You know what I mean, and you know, imagine how annoying it is when you're trying to chill, you partying, you know, and you got cameras, camera, you know, do all in your face. You don't know what it is, and like. Tapping my shoulder, like, man, get him out of there. Like, he with you? I'm like, yeah, he with me. I'm like, all right, cool. I said, man, chill, bro. Like, you can't do that. <laughs> but it just, you know, I, I mean, I understand the excitement because yeah. it's more natural for me now because I hang around these people. Yeah, you and, I'm, and, and, and I'm, I've been around them for a while yeah. and I know them. But, you know, I, I can't imagine what it's like to be around somebody who you look up to or your favorite rapper. But, you know, you just can't, you know, you could do it. Just don't do it with me. Don't, <laughs> don't do it with me, <laughs> don't man. Do it your time. Yeah, don't do it my time, Listen, man. Don't do that on my time. Nah, man. Like, because like people hit me up all the time, like, yo, connect me with this, connect me with this. Like, I have no problem with doing any of this. But you gotta make sure your stuff is it's together. together. Cause you saying my name is on the line. You you saying, oh, get on my single or, or show them this. I can I, I plug things. Yeah, you know I mean, like DH, man, want to a, a rapper that I, I, I really respect what he's doing. Man, like I jammed him with Fab plenty of time. Like, yo, look, we over at Live on Canal Street, pull up, connect him with Fab, he jam up. And on several occasions, but there's other people who reach out and they want, but DH got a track record. He got 20 mixtapes, he got a million videos. Mm-hmm. People want you to connect them, but they don't have a, a resume. They don't have no music out. They got one song, one take. It's like you gotta have a, a resume if, if, if I'm gonna bring it to the table in front of these people because they're not looking for you know somebody. They get this shit all day. All day. All day. So, you know, I definitely want to share my platform. That's one of the things I want to do. But, you know, I need people to understand that uh, when you're sharing your platform, you got to, we got to, I got to look out for you, but you got to look out for me. got to look out for me. I can bring you to the table, but don't make me look crazy. Come on. And talking about the table, speaking of the table, I mean, you have this saying about the table. I bring the table to the table. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I bring the table to the table and the, and the, and the Entree, the entree, the chairs, oh, the yeah, silverware, yeah, sure. and the plate. Because you always say, and this is, I just really believe this. Um, I actually took it as my deal. Um, bring something more to the table than just money. You know, if you don't have money, that's okay. But you better have something else. Man, you can bring your energy, your laughter, your your joy, your uh, bring your ideas, bring mm-hmm. your creativity, bring anything. It ain't gotta be in the form. Don't have currency. to be currency. All they got, like you gotta just. Pull up to the table, like, and, and I said when I did, I think the Forbes or Black Enterprise interview, I'm like, you know, people come to the table looking what's for them. When I come to the table, I'm bringing the bringing table it. to the table, yes. you know what I mean? So I'm saying that to say not Always to be cocky, arrogant. When I come to the kit table, I'm bringing something. Yeah. And I'm not just coming with no, with no, um, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing, you know, like, and I don't mind other people pulling up chairs, but just when you pull up a chair, man, you got to bring, bring something, some element, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And it ain't, like I said, it ain't always going to be money. It ain't always going to be, you know, the things. Just bring something that, you know, 
something that you possess, something of, you know, something that you're great at, you know? Yeah. And, you know, we cool. Yeah, so just know when I pull up to the table, may not be in the form of currency, but I'm bringing some stuff, okay, Larry? Right, yeah, man. What I got it? some stuff for you, all right? Bring some stuff, bring some <laughs> stuff, and bring some corn, bring whatever. Yes, I got it for you. So, we hear about the accolades, all those different things. Do people, you know, I want to know what's your favorite color? What do you like to watch on TV when you when you and your girl chilling? <coughs> like, do you like to watch SWV? You know, S S V U. Um, you know what SVU is? SVU. Mm-hmm. Usually, go like Law and Order. Like, and be honest, the last time I watched TV, I can't even tell you. Like. I try to, like, I, if anything, I may watch a movie, but mm -hmm. I get home very late, I, I, I shower, I go to sleep, and, you know, like, I used to, I used to watch a lot of TV, but now it's just, like, I think I take, like, two series at points, mm -hmm. because, you know, the simple things, like, watching TV, um, going to play basketball, whatever it may be, I need to get back in the habit of that, but right now, it's just, like, my mission in life and the things that I want, I'm just kind of, like, I'm kind of just... But not even consuming. I'm just like really stressing myself out. A good stress, but in order to obtain those things because, you know, I, I, it's just so much I want. And you gotta think about people who've made it. You know, these uh, people before us, like the Diddy's. You think Diddy so came, watch came TV? Diddy by chilling, you know, not working when people sleeping. Mm -hmm. Like, he became that, that individual by working day and night and by breaking barriers and just doing things people not. You know what I mean? So when you know I when I like I don't I don't even get fulfillment out of watching TV at this current moment in my life because I'm on a mission, you know? So like I said, I wake up early. Work I, out. I, I wake up early, work out and I shower, leave the house and I'm gone. You know, sometimes I ain't got shit to do. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's, it's more so like your mind. You know, it's, it's more so thinking. I may be driving around looking for real estate, or maybe so at that's the your hobbies and your interest right now is you know real estate. Yeah. And, you know different things like that. What you're doing, what you could do to. I'm just not gonna sit inside. But if I sit inside, I'll be on my computer just planning, putting things together. Mm -hmm. But you know, like I spend a lot of my time thinking, driving around looking at real estate, just trying to figure out the next plan. Because like I said, I know it's coming. I know something's gonna strike. I'm just being patient and just gonna. Boom. 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 So as of now, what what Larry has going on next? What's coming up for Larry besides the the restaurant? You know, what's what's next? I think like some more restaurant concepts. Uh, I mean, one thing I'm I'm on heavy. I'm going to open up a menu soon because you know, like for a long time I've been making these clubs too much money. Too much money. I was just about to say that Larry the promoter. Too, too much money. That side of you. I, you gotta be able to bring that to your own self. Right. You can't get, keep giving that to nobody else. You know, like real talk, I'm, I'm gonna turn the city into Atlanta or Houston or LA. You know, just on our scale, but you know, if I have my own venue because it allowed me so much more freedom so much to do what I want. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? On any given day I want. And you know, like a lot of these clubs don't have the best interest for me. You know, they want to make their money, and then uh, and then I'm just a promoter. Yeah. You know, so I understand that, and I'm mad that people prior to me didn't do it, like before me, because we need more black-owned establishments, mm -hmm. clubs, restaurants, whatever, and we don't have enough. Yeah. So when it comes to it, you know, uh, you know, we don't have no big New Year's Eve party. Why? Because we don't own the club. Because we don't own it. We don't own the club for New Year's Eve is one of the biggest holidays, so anybody can just open up the doors and make the money. So we don't have no big New Year's Eve parties because we own nothing. Yes. <laughs> so we need to own more. We need to own more real estate, invest in real estate, and just, um, you know, we just got to take ownership of things, man. And we cannot just continue to own. Mm -hmm. We got to own. Come on. We can't keep renting. We have to start owning, guys. I have one more thing that I want to do with you before we shut this out. So there's a segment of the episode called Truth or Tell where we spill tea, more tea, and nothing but the tea. So, <laughs> I ain't trying to be all up in your business with some people. Oh, okay, drink the whole drink, right? Okay, a, a few people have a few so questions. So these are just some questions. And you, you open it, you can open it, and I, I mean, I don't want you to skip a question, but if you feel like you need to skip it, you can skip it. We're gonna only do two. two no, we only, no, we only <coughs> do two questions. All right, let me shake this up. <laughs> 
Only two questions, guys. I ain't lying. You know, sometimes you don't know what people are going to ask because I get some crazy shit in my DMs. Mm-hmm. I get some crazy shit that I just don't pay no attention to, honestly. Really? You you check your own DMs? Yeah, I check my DMs. You know, I, I, there's people who have other people that check their stuff and do stuff like that, but you check your own? Nah, yeah. But yeah, people just ask some crazy things sometimes. It's like, all right, I mean. Weird old stuff. Huh? What's the best advice someone will give you? Or maybe what's the best advice you can give someone? I've received a lot of advice from people, bro. Just offhand, just thinking about the best advice is, is tough. I receive so much advice from people. I'm really like a student. Like, I listen all day and, you know, like, I take it all in. So, I'm about to skip this one. I, I can't think of nothing you offhand. You can't think of nothing offhand? I can't think of nothing offhand. What do you feel is the true definition of being happy? Being happy for me is uh, seeing my family happy. Like, that's fulfillment. Like, just say if I, just say if tomorrow God called me home, I know that I fulfilled my, um, I fulfilled, you know, just like made my, made my family happy because mm -hmm. You know, like, my mom told me, like, you know, I'm so proud of you. My grandmother, like, they so happy with me. Like, they brag about me. My mm -hmm. grandma, she's 50-something years old, and she go check and look at my Instagram from 300 weeks ago. Like, real talk, like, she go like photos from way back then, and, and even my sister. So, that's like, you know, like, you want to make your people happy, and just to know that they're happy, it, it warms my heart because... You know, my, my grandma was upset that I, dis, I didn't decide to pursue college. Because mm -hmm. she wanted to make sure her baby boy was good. I mean, same thing mm -hmm. with my mom's. And, you know, I went my own route, but they're so happy in the man I become. And, you know, when you can, like, wake up and you just hear things like, you've done such a great job raising your young man. Mm -hmm. Such respect. Like, he, he, he respect people. Like, he, you know, like, you hear all those things. It's just like, you know, like. I'm just happy they're happy, you know? So yeah. that's definitely uh, my definition of being happy. happy. Yeah. So since you skipped one, you have to go back for another one. All right, cool. Uh, like you could see through these questions or something. What was one of your most embarrassing moments? You never had an embarrassing moment with your girlfriend? You never had an embarrassing moment at the restaurant? You never had an embarrassing moment around any of your celebrity friends? You never had an embarrassing moment? Embarrassing moment, let me see, I'm sure I have, but... Hmm, embarrassing moment. You are that polished? Like, you are that, like, No, 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 like, no, no not that polished, but it's just like, you know, thinking of it offhand, like, something that's very embarrassing to me, like, it's, I'm also cautious of, 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 of a lot of things I'm doing, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so, but what's You never slipped out and, and, and passed gas on your girl? Like, you never Yeah, but, I mean, I'm thinking of things like that, but that's not, like, all right, embarrassing. I'm, think, embarrassing. I'm, I'm thinking, like, the most embarrassing. The most, mm-hmm. Mm. The most embarrassing. I mean, of course, like, the first time passing gas on her was, like, like, I, I was afraid, but ever since then, I opened up that seal, it's been all. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since then, it's been on. Like, Bad at No, but like, girl, like, and still to this day, she has not fought it on Really? It's How many years have you been on? Oh my God. Like, for real, she, she told me, like, this is how you fought it like, while you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she's waiting for the, for the ring. Man, I don't know, but listen, like, I promise you, like, I remember, like, my first time fought around her was probably like a year and some change ago. And I, me and my mom was around my mom, and she was like, you never fought around her? We talking in front of her? I'm like, no, but that day, <laughs> while I was sitting on that couch at my mom's house, like, for a holiday, I ended up farting on her. <laughs> and, and was she, like, grossed out, or was she, like, no, finally? But, but then it's, like, from from that moment forward, like, honestly, she'd be like, no, like, for real, this is, like, this is crazy, you know, so. Because, like, real talk, once that's, like, once you do it, it's yeah, a wrap. Yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. That's a fact. That's a wrap. That's a fact. Thank you so much for answering our questions. You know, we had more, but we just up on time. But, um. That's no problem. I'm sure everyone knows where to reach Larry at. You know, mm -hmm. his Instagram is Larry Morrow. His um, restaurant Instagram is uh, Morrow, at Morrow's. Um, you can get the book. 
off your website, right? Larry, under, I mean, Larry-Morrow.com or you can get it from Morrow's. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah, if you want to use... So, what if somebody wants to book a party? I wanted to. Ha I wanted you to do their party. Do you offer that to, like, the public? Or what is you, it just... do party? Like, so if I, if I have a party coming up and I want you to, you know... Promoted or what? The, what does that? No, no. I, I got a lot of people asking about that, but what, what, with me, it's like I don't. You, you're not in control of another person's party, so just say if you're promoting that party, and when I promote things, people automatically assume it's mine. Mm -hmm. So, and some go on at that party, it reflect me. Reflect you. So that's something I don't do. I don't promote parties, and then you know it's just kind of tough. Like when you do a party and you promote and you put energy into it, you make, you know, you get used to making a certain dollar amount for the your work that you put in. Mm -hmm. And of course, if uh, if you want to pay, I promote another party. Like, I get corporate companies who like pay me good money to promote things. And it, I don't got to do that much, but it's like crazy money, you know what I mean? Right. So. I get it, I definitely get it. But you can also go to Morrow's, what's the address? 2438 St. Claude. 2438 St. Claude. I mean, the food is amazing. I visit there a lot and I love it. So, um. Thank you so much, Larry, right, for joining you. us. Um, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait to see everything that you have going on. I cannot wait to have a seat at the table. Right. And guys, thank you so much for watching Couch Conversations with Shatara. Until next time, bye. Appreciate y'all. I want y'all to do for me. This is what I want y'all to do for me.